So uh, this video is all going to be about using uh, the Ruth Horwitz um, sort of tabular method to figure out the range of uh, Ks that determine stability for a system. So I have a system here which I um, set up with this plant, GFS, and GFS is of this form. It has uh, one zero and four poles. And I have this forward gain K, which I want to see if the K can stabilize the system. Now, we know the system is already unstable because right <clears throat> from the get-go, if a system has any negative coefficients, we know right off the bat it's unstable. So what I want to see is what are the range of Ks that make this stable. So I'm going to need to solve for the new transfer function out. So the new transfer function is going to be uh, the combined transfer function kg over 1 plus kg. Um, and then I'm going to solve for the poles of that new transfer function. And then we're going to do Ruth Horwitz on that new, um, that new set of poles. So... Uh, the new transfer function, so let's just say uh, y over r, uh, y over r is going to be equal to um, kgs over 1 plus kgs. And all we really care about is the poles of the transfer function, but we'll write it all down anyway. So that's going to be uh, k times... 2s plus 1 over s to the fourth plus 5s cubed plus 5s squared minus 5s minus 6 over 1 plus that same item up there. So I'll just write ditto here. Okay. And, and this just meant to represent that, and that is simplifiable to, uh, we're just going to multiply the top and the bottom by the denominator, this denominator, the denominator of g of s, and we get, um, on the top we just get uh, uh, k2s plus 1, I'll write that later, and on the bottom we get uh, s to the fourth plus 5s cubed plus s squared minus the quantity, or sorry, plus the quantity 2k minus 5 times s, and then plus the quantity k minus 6. Okay. And on the top, like I said before, we simply have k times 2s plus 1. Now what we want to see is, again, what is the range of k's that actually stabilize uh, this denominator, and we're going to use the Ruth Horowitz methods for that. So I'm going to grab a new page, leave that there, and I'm going to, uh, sorry, leave it there, and I'm going to write down the terms <coughs> of the denominator so I can form the table, the Ruth Horowitz table, so again I'm just going to write Ruth. Horowitz, okay, and the table uh, is constructed like so. I put the coefficients on this side, so we have s to the fourth, um, s cubed, s squared, s to the first, and s to the zeroth. And then in these, bin, in sort of those are the rows, and in the columns, I'm actually put the coefficients. So the coefficients here are going to be the coefficient for the s to the fourth term is 1, then the coefficient for the s to the cube term is 5, 5, 2k minus 5, k minus 6, 0. So those, <coughs> those are actually the coefficients. Again, I put the coefficients like so, the top coefficient, the next coefficient, alternating in this zigzag fashion. So this is the highest order coefficient and the next order coefficient goes right here. So now what I do what I do is I have to populate these other 
uh, sections of the table. And to do that, I actually have to uh, do a relatively complicated mathematical operation on these. I have to essentially take the 2 by 2 determinant of these four terms, uh, the negative of that, and then divide by this term. So in this case, uh, that term right there, which I'll call um, uh, B1, B1 is simply going to be equal to um, this times this, minus this times this, the minus of that. So it's actually going to be uh, 5 times 5 um, minus 1 times 2k minus 5. Okay. And that's all going to be divided by this term, the a3 term, um, 5. And that pretty, uh, the algebra uh, simplifies nicely, and that ends up being just um, uh, 6 minus uh, 2 over 5k. So that's what B1 ends up being equal to. We can also do that operation right here for B2. B2 is going to be equal to 5 times 0. Uh, this is subtracted, this is added, so it's going to be 2k minus 5 times k minus 6 minus 5 times 0 all over 2k minus 5. And this nicely simplifies, this is 0, these two terms cancel out, so I just get end up getting k minus 6 here. So we have b1 and b2. Now I can solve for this term, this s1, this S1 term over here. So I'll call this C1. Again, I'll solve for C1. C1 is going to be this times this minus this times this divided by B1. So C, C1 is going to be equal to um, 2k minus 5 times B1 minus 5 times B2 over B1. B1. Okay. This ends up being a more complicated term, which we'll expand out later, but I just want to get all these terms uh, simplified first. Again, since this term here is 0, then this term right here, 0, 0, this term will be 0 here. And then for solving for this term right here, it's relatively simple because all of these terms ended up, uh, ended up um, in the way they are. Again, we just have b2 times c1 minus 0 divided by c1, just giving b2 down here. Where b1, b2, and c1 are expressed over here. Now we can write down a larger form of the table where all those terms are actually expressed out. Or all we really need to look at is what B1, C1, and B2 are. Because the whole point of doing this table is that the terms in the first column here, when they switch signs, that tells you that you have a pole on the right half plane or you have a unstable pole. So I just need to look at those terms, see when the sign switches, and then I'll be able to move on from that. Okay. So again, I'll put this right here. I just want to look at that first column. That first column goes 1, then 5, then that B1 term is just going to be 6 minus 2 over 5k. That C1 term is a little bit more complicated. The C1 term is going to be actually um, 5 k minus 30 minus 2k minus 5 times 6 minus 2 over 5k all over 6 minus 2 over 5k again this actually has a negative sign in front of it and that's just a symbol of me multiplying those two together, 
uh, and then pulling out the right term. This is just going to be 5 times that first thing. And uh, the next term is just going to be, fortunately for us, simply k minus 6. So I just want to see what when these uh, terms change sign. So uh, this is really the only one that provides a significant difficulty. By looking at these other ones, I can tell that this term is going to change this term, um, third term, okay, will uh, go negative, uh, will become negative uh, for uh, k uh, greater than 15. And this last term, also fortunately simply, uh, will become negative for k uh, less than 6. So we already have a range that we've defined. Um, we know that we have uh, some stability properties. Uh, if it was just these two terms uh, involved, oops, I need to move that up. Um, if it's just those two terms involved, then given that this is the first column of the Ruth Hurwitz table, okay, um, we know that uh, if we go above 15, we'll definitely go unstable, and if we go below 6, we'll definitely become unstable. But then we need to actually look at this term and see when it goes negative. So we don't actually need to consider the bottom. The bottom is already considered here. So this is just going to go negative for k greater than 15. Okay. But the entire system is going to go negative for um, the when this actual term goes negative is when the numerator goes negative. We just want to know when the numerator crosses 0. And we can actually show just by plotting this out that um, uh, it becomes negative. So this becomes negative uh, for k greater than around uh, 11.3. So what we can see is if we simulate this original system, this system right here, so let me try to position the pages in a way that sort of sums up everything. So if we simulate this original system here, this g of s with this k, and we give it a range of k between 11.3 and 6, so that means we'll be stable. So all our poles are on the um, left half plane. So we know we're stable. All poles on the left half plane. for uh, k uh, greater than 6 and less than 11.3. And we can simulate the system with those values of k to show actually that that's true. We'll go unstable for those values. Okay, thank you.